In a lot of JavaScript interviews you might get a coding exercise and you must do it directly there in the interview so you don't have any time to google or prepare. This is why in this video I want to show you 5 most popular exercises that I got a lot on the interviews and asked also so you know how to solve them and in what direction they are going at all. And the first exercise that you might get is create a function which stores inside a secret word which cannot be changed or accessed from outside. And this is exactly a question to understand if you know closures in JavaScript or not. So how we can proceed with this task? The main idea is that we must store a function somewhere before we will use it. In other case we can't really store a closure inside. This is why it will look something like this. So we create a function, for example some function, and we don't get any arguments here. And inside we are creating a closure, so here we will have secret, and it is our secret string that we can't change from the outside. Because this is a closure we must return here a new function, so we simply write here that we are returning a function, and this function will return a secret word. Which actually means we have a function which returns a function. Now our usage will be for example get secret and here we want to call our sum function. And actually get secret here is a function and we can call this function. This is why here we simply write console log get secret and here we just call it just like normal function. And the important point here that first of all we are assigning our sum function to the variable and only then we are using it. Only in this case the closure will work and we have access to our internal property. If we will check in browser as you can see we are getting word secret. But actually if we will try to access some function in the browser we simply get a secret. We don't have any access to this local property secret because it is internal inside a function. So if you get a question regarding closures on the interview you can show this code or if you are getting such task then you already can solve it. The second popular question that I see a lot is how we can clone an object in JavaScript. And you must understand that in JavaScript when we simply assign the same object to another object we just reference in the same object inside memory. We are not creating a new variable which actually means our code for example foo equals object won't create a clone. Our foo will be referenced our object. And this is exactly the problem. So the question on the interview is how we can really clone it so we won't mutate our object that we created before. And two most popular solutions in JavaScript is by using spread operator or object assign. And they are working exactly in the same way. So what we can create here, we can create a clone and here we can use a spread. The main idea is that these brackets will create a new object. Now we want to spread all properties of the old object inside the new object. But this will exactly create a clone. This is why here when we console log our object and our clone, after we will change our clone, you will see that they are different. For example here I can write clone foo equals foo. We check in browser and as you can see here we are getting our object which was not modified and here is our object with property foo. Which means spread is the first solution how you can clone an object. The second solution is by using object assign. So we can write here clone equals and we are calling object dot assign and the important part here as a target we must provide an empty object. In this case we are creating a new object. And the second parameter here will be object so we will put all properties of the object inside our new object. And as you can see in browser it is working exactly the same. We didn't mutate the old object but we created the new object. So the answer here is either spread operator or object assign. The next question is typical to check how you can write code regarding for example strings or arrays, how you can change them, calculate things in them and so on. And the typical question here is for example count vowels inside a string. It doesn't mean that you will get exactly this question, you can get a question like calculate all numbers inside a string and so on. So actually how we can proceed here? We need to find all our vowels, so first of all we must create this function. Let's name it find vowels and we know that we are getting our string. So first of all we must write what are vowels. This is why here let's create them. This is just an array of all possible vowels and this is a, e, i, o and u. So we have our array, now we must check every single character inside our string and increase our counter which we will return. 
So normally beginners will create here additional property like count and it will equal zero and now we need to loop through every single element of our array. And we can do it in different ways, for example by using for loop we can write here let character of our string dot to lowercase because actually we must be on the safe side, we can get also uppercase and we can't really compare uppercase letter with our vowels array. This is why here to lowercase is mandatory and actually is important if you want to pass an interview because you need to really check all these little cases. And now inside 4 we have access to our character. This is why here we can check ok, if we have this character inside vowels array then we increase our counter. So we can write if vowels includes to check if our character is there and here we are checking our character and if this is true we want to increase counter. And of course we need around brackets for our if condition. As a last step here we want to return our count, this is why here I will return it and now let's check if it's working. I am reloading the page and as you can see we are getting 3, let's check this out, we have here A, E and O, which means this code is working fine. But actually this code is good for beginners, at least you solve the exercise, but we can make it better if we want to write some advanced stuff. Instead of this code we can write a reduce, and if you don't know reduce is a functional way to write for loops. And if you have more advanced level as a developer you must write dry and reusable code. This is why it's much better to use here reduce to show that you are really good in javascript. So what we want to do, we want to take our string and make here to lowercase just like we did previously. Now we want to get an array to loop through every single element. And for this we can use split operator just with empty string. In this case we must get an array of every single character. And now we want to calculate our counter. So on our array we want to call reduce function and here we must provide two things, first of all a function where inside we have our accumulator and every single character and secondly we will have here our counter and our default counter is zero and now inside we must write a code how we increase our counter and we can simply return the same code like it was previously, for example with if bubbles and increasing of counter. So I can copy paste this if here inside and here we want to increase our accumulator and this is our counter when it includes our character. So here I can simply write if and inside accumulator plus plus. And after this we must return our accumulator, in other case it won't work. Let's check this out, I'm reloading the page and we are still getting 3, which means our code is working correctly. And this is much better because we wrote our code with reduce in a functional way. But what is not good here we used if condition, which is more imperative form of writing code, and we can easily improve it just by using ternary operator. So here we want to return our accumulator and actually we want to check first of all if our vowels includes our character. In this case we want to increase our accumulator, so here accumulator plus 1, and in other case we don't want to increase our accumulator. And as you can see this code is much better, let's check this out, I am saving this and reloading the page, we still get 3. And we can improve this code even more if we will remove this return and just write a single liner here. So we can write like this, remove here our arrow function so it will be a single liner, and this code is really dry. So if on interview you want to show that you are advanced developer, you must not only solve the task, but do it in dry and reusable way. The next typical task that I saw a lot is reverse each word in a sentence. So you have a sentence like for example welcome to this javascript guide and you really just need to reverse every single word in a sentence. So we need to build reverse string function. So let's create this function reverse string and we are getting here as our argument a string and what we want to do, first of all we want to split our string by space. In this case we are getting an array of our words, now we want just to reverse them and we have a reverse function inside javascript for this. This is why here just dot reverse. So we reversed our array and now we need to create a string back, this is why here we are using dot join and here we are using space again. Let's check this out, I am reloading the page and we reversed all these words in a single liner. This is exactly what you must code for this task in the interview. And the last task in the list is a little bit more difficult. As you can see here we must define a function which takes an array of strings and returns the most commonly occurring string in that array. And I saw this task on the interview enormous amount of times, so you really need to know how to solve it. 
And I want to show you here the beginner approach and advanced approach. So first of all, let's do a beginner approach. So we want our function most common string. And we're getting here our array of strings. Let's name it strings. And here inside what we want to do first, we want to build an object. So the idea is that inside this object we want such structure. So for example, here is our object and inside we have A. And we know that inside our array of strings we have A three times. Then we have here B, for example, two times and here C one time. And after we generated such object, we can understand what is the highest key. In this case, we must return A because here we have a value three. So the idea is first of all to build such object and secondly we must find the maximum number inside this object. So this is how typically beginners are solving such code. So first of all here we must create our object common strings and it will be just an empty object and we will fill it. After this we must loop through our strings so normally people will use here for each and here we are getting every single string. Now inside we want to check if we already have such key inside our object, if not we must assign one there and if we have such key then we must increase it. So we are checking here, okay, do we have inside our common string, our string that we are looking for and if this equals undefined, so people are writing equals undefined, then we want to create it. So we are writing here common string, our string equals one. In other case we want to increase it, so here will be our common string, string plus one, so here plus plus. So let's check if this code is working at all. So here I want to write console log most common string and we are providing inside our array of a, b, c and then we want a twice. So here I save this and let's look in the browser. And we are getting here undefined. It. it is happening because here we didn't return anything and we must at least write console log. So we want to see here our common string object that we created. Let's check this out. As you can see our object is correct. We have A twice, B once and C once. After this we must find our max value. And in this case people will create two additional properties. So here for example we have our max entry, this is what we want to return, this is undefined and here our max value and by default it is for example zero. Now we need to loop through every single element inside our object. So here is for loop and we are getting common string and actually the naming is bad, let's name it common strings here also common strings here and here, so we don't have name collision. And now we can write here for common string in common strings, so we are getting every single element inside object. Here we want to check our value and reassign max entry if we need to. So we are checking here if our common strings and here common strings, so our key, and it returns us a value. And we are checking here if it is bigger than max value and our max value is zero now, then we want to reassign our max entry. This is why inside we must reassign our max entry and here we want to store our string, this is why it is just common string. But also here we must reassign our max value, so here let's write max value and we want to write here common strings, common string, so this will return our value. In this case we are looping through every single element inside object and we are getting here maximum entry. And now at the end we want to return this max entry. Let's check if it's working at all. I'm reloading the page and as you can see we are getting back A, which means our code is working correctly. Now if we will try here and write B several times, we can see that we are getting back B, which means we successfully solved this task and we are good to go. But we can do it better because this is not an advanced approach. This is why here I want to create the same function once more to show how I will write it. Let's name this function for example most frequent so we don't have a name collision. And we are getting here our array. So first of all we want to create this object which is our mapping. So here what I want to get is our mapping and we will use here array reduce to get the same object. This is why here array dot reduce and we know that here we are getting our accumulator and every single element. And here is our function and at the beginning we have our empty object. Now inside this function we need exactly the same logic, if we have a property we increase it, if we don't have then we assign a one here. This is why here we can write accumulator element, so we are getting this object, assign and here we are checking accumulator element, if we have it then we need to increase it, so here accumulator element plus one, in other case we must just write there one. And of course after this we must return our accumulator, so let's write here return accumulator. So this function will create a mapping for us exactly like this code on the top with for each. 
After this mapping I want to do one more reduce to find exactly the value. But here is the problem we can't really call reduce on an object. The main idea is what I want to use here is object entries. And actually here how it works we can write here object dot entries and we can provide here inside our object. For example we have a1 and b2. As you can see object entries created an array of arrays from our object. And this is exactly what I want because I want to call reduce on this array. So here we have array with two elements. First of all it's a key, secondly a value and exactly the same here. This is why here what I want to do is return object.entries and inside we must provide our mapping. So this will create array of arrays. And after this we want to call our reduce function again and we are getting here accumulator and every single element. And here as a default value for our accumulator I want to create array because we have the structure of array of arrays and here I must provide null and zero. Why like this? This is exactly the same code like we have here with let max entry and max value. So these are default values. We need somewhere to start and this is max value zero and we don't have any element so it is null. Now inside this function we will write exactly the same logic like an if condition on the top. So we want to check here if our element one and this is our value is bigger than our accumulator one. In this case we are checking the value that we have inside accumulator and the value that we have here. If yes then here we must return our element and if no we are returning accumulator. And the second reduce that we wrote here will return us data in the same format like array with two arguments. And actually we are interested here only in the first argument which will be our character. This is why here I took the first element. Now let's check if it's working. I will copy paste this console log and use here our function most frequent. Let's check this out. I am reloading the page and we are getting here b and b. Which means this function is working exactly the same but it is being written in more advanced way. As you can see the business logic inside this function stays the same but the code is more advanced. Also if you are interested in most popular javascript interview questions don't forget to check this video also.